Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Today's message is titled, The All About Me Generation is in Full Force. You know, the Holy Bible tells us precisely what the state of the world will be like during the last days. One of the top scriptures that I believe reveals we are living in the final moments before the rapture of the church and the start of the seven-year tribulation period is recorded in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. In 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, the Apostle Paul records the following. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. I think it's pretty safe to say that everything I just talked about right there in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, is exactly what's occurring right before our very eyes, right here and right now, more than any other time in human history. With the rapid increase in technology, in the explosion of social media, our generation has turned into the all about me generation. Let's take a look at just a few of the things that I just mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, and you tell me if these are not the characteristics of the era we live in today. First of all, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, we read that people will be lovers of their self, or lovers of self. First, I think it is safe to say that men and women are lovers of their own selves. Just go on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, Snapchat, etc. And you will see how obsessed people are with themselves. Social media has turned into the selfie more. It's all about me, me, me. In fact, just over the last couple years, there have been many deaths by selfies. I have seen several breaking stories over the last couple years of men and women who were so driven to get their selfie that they did not realize they were about to, about to fall off a cliff or off a large building. The bottom line, this generation is without a doubt obsessed with their own beauty, money, and success more than any other generation in human history. So that was just one of the things mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Let's look at something else in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. That pe uh, disobedient to parents. I think it's safe to say kids and adults are disobedient to their parents. Like many of us, when I was growing up, if I backtalked my parents or someone older than me, I would be punished. Today, most kids are raised spoiled. With full access and a heavy influence of social media and the entertainment industry, music, movie, TV, etc., they are running around with no discipline whatsoever. Many are going as far as using foul language when speaking to adult peers and even their parents. Every place you see children these days, you see disobedience. I recently witnessed one of my own nieces, who is 13 years old, using every foul word I can think of toward her mother. The language coming out of her mouth and a majority of, of her friends is disturbing. My mouth almost dropped when I heard the language being used. But then I realized in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, prophesied exactly what we're seeing right now, that this would be what it would be like in the last days. Let's go to another characteristic mentioned in 2 Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, we are told people will be unthankful and unholy. 
I think it's safe to say people are unthankful and unholy. We have a God who has given each of us breath in our lungs. The gift of life is something we should be thankful for, but that is not what we see in the world. We, as Christians, are told we are to store up treasure in heaven and not on earth. But in this generation, people could care less about treasures in heaven. People today, for the most part, care about the here and the now and their earthly possessions, but could, could care less about where they are going to spend eternity. Let's go to another characteristic of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. People will be despisers of those that are good. That's in 2 Timothy 3.3. 3. I think it's safe to say that people are despisers of those that are good. More than any other generation in human history, people are calling evil good and good evil. Topics such as same-sex marriage and abortion are celebrated, as is, as is anything that is an abomination to God. Yet, when you try to speak out against it and stand up for the gospel, you are the one called immoral. Humanity has turned into a let's just be happy and live the way we want mentality. But when you bring up the God of the Bible, his commandments, and how we are to abhor that which is evil and cling to that which is good, you are pronounced evil. Absolutely, people are despisers of those that are good. Folks, I only reviewed four of the things listed in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. I encourage you to read the whole section. And again, you will see that every one of those things recorded fits this generation to a T. And I got news for you. It's not going to get any better. But Jesus will fix all of this one day very soon. We are headed full speed toward the seven-year tribulation period. However, just prior to this, Jesus is going to snatch away. He's going to rapture those that are truly saved before this train hits. And if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around this world right now. You notice something's not right. It's not. This ship is sinking and you need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. And that lifeboat is Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you to get religious. I am telling you, you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the Apostle Paul gives you the formula right on the screen there in Ephesians, here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Let's read it together. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So first you have to hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. If you've never heard the gospel of your salvation before, it's right on the screen there in the parentheses. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. This is the gospel of your salvation that you believe, that you're putting your faith and your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ for you on that cross at Calvary. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, paying your sin debt in full with his blood. Jesus paid the price that you could never pay on your own. He paid it with his blood. So you could be reconciled back to him. So you could be forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us misses the mark. We are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. We serve a holy, a just, and a perfect God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary so you could be forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. Going back to Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. Once you hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which we just went over, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. Once you hear that and you believe it, 
You put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ and in his death, burial, and resurrection. Look at what it says next in Ephesians 1.13. In whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is, in, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So once you believe the gospel of your salvation, you put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ and in his death, burial, and resurrection, you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. There is a spiritual baptism that occurs when you believe the gospel of your salvation. You're baptized into the body of Christ. And on the bottom of the screen in Ephesians 4.30, we read, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. But right here and right now, it's time to repent, to believe the gospel, and to be converted to new life in Jesus Christ today. To repent, that means metanoia. It means to change your mind. What are you changing your mind about? You're changing your mind about who God is. You are going from unbelief, dead in your sins, to belief, a new creature in Christ. You are agreeing with God about your sin condition, that you are a sinner in need of a savior, that you can't save yourself that Jesus Christ did it all for you on the cross at Calvary. He paid it all for you on the cross at Calvary by shedding his precious blood, all right? And you're believing and you're putting your faith and your trust again in the gospel of your salvation, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. The bottom line is this, heaven and hell are very real literal places and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's horrific. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I do not want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he is the only name that can save you. In John 14, 6, we read, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. In Acts 4.12, we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And in 1 Timothy 2.5, we read, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. Muhammad is not going to save you. Dead saints are are not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. Religion is not going to save you. Your own works, you trying to be a good person and earn your way to heaven, that is not going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that will save you, and that is Jesus Christ in him alone. And again, you are not promised your next breath. Any of us can breathe our last breath and die at any moment. And I want you to go to heaven if today were to be your last day. Jesus loves you. And he demonstrates his love for you for what he did for you on that cross. In Romans 5, 8, we read, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You need to get saved right now because tomorrow is not promised. But the other thing is, yes, Jesus is coming. He's coming very soon. Everything we see going on in the world, it proves several things. It proves the Bible is real. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back very soon. And you do not want to be here for what's coming on this planet. So settle the issue right here and right now. Put your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, believing he took upon himself the sins, excuse me, the sins of the entire world. He took your sins, and he nailed it to that cross. He paid the price that you could never pay on your own. He paid it with his blood. So put your faith and your trust in that, that he paid your price in full with his blood on that cross and in his death, burial, and resurrection and be reconciled back to God today because tomorrow is not promised. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he is coming and he's coming quickly. One day very soon, sooner than most of us realize at the appointed time. Keep watching with me. God bless you all.